Over Black Friday weekend, we're offering 22% off everything in the TLDR store. From our cute country to choose pin badges, including Germany, to stickers and even our book, Brexit the Colouring Book. Get our biggest discount of the year by using code Black Friday. After nearly two months of intense negotiations with over 300 negotiators spread across 22 working groups, Germany's incoming traffic light coalition has finally announced their new programme for government. On Wednesday afternoon, the SPD, Greens and FDP published their long-awaited coalition manifesto, a dense 178-page document with policies on everything from autobahns to cannabis. As one of the world's largest economies and one of the most influential member states of the European Union, one question is on everyone's mind. What does this actually mean for Germany, for Europe and for the world over? Well, in this video, let's try and answer that question right now. We're going to split the new programme into four parts. Social policy, green policy, economic policy and foreign policy. Let's start with social policy. When it comes to social issues, this government was always going to be more liberal than Merkel's Christian Democrats, who have been in power since 2005. As such, they've committed to loosening immigration laws by digitising the immigration process and extending the blue card scheme to non-academic professionals. They've also announced that they'll be reducing the voting age to 16 and even legalising the regulated sale of cannabis, a policy which was originally supported by both the Greens and the FDP, with a re-evaluation of this new policy set to take place in four years' time. And this is significant because a recent study by the Henrik Hein University in Dusseldorf estimated that cannabis legislation would net the state a cool 4.7 billion euros annually and create 27 7,000 new jobs. The coalition also want to ease Germany's housing affordability crisis by building 400,000 homes a year, which represents a nearly 40% increase on the 285,000 built in 2019. Let's move on to green policy. Here there was always going to be a tension between the Greens, who unsurprisingly want massive investment into green infrastructure, and the FDP, who are generally wary of increasing government spending. In the end, they've agreed to phase out coal by 2030, eight years earlier than the current target of 2038, as well as ending the sale of new combustion engine cars by 2035 and investing massively into hydrogen power. All in all, this is basically good news. Thanks to an over-reliance on coal and gas and a strict aversion to nuclear power, Germany has by far and away the worst CO2 emissions in the EU at the moment, so these steps might help them improve that. It's worth noting, however, that the new administration do plan to continue Germany's phase-out of nuclear power, which will likely make reducing emissions a fair bit more expensive. On to economic policy. Economic policy was also always going to be difficult. As parties on the left of German politics, the Greens and SDP are instinctively pretty generous when it comes to fiscal policy, with more taxes and more spending. The Greens, for example, wanted to pay for their planned 500 billion euro decade-long green investment program with a wealth tax on all assets over 2 million euros. The FDP, on the other hand, are essentially neoliberal free marketeers who like low taxes and low spending. In the end, the Greens got their proposed 12 euro minimum wage, up from 960 today, while the FDP got their way when it comes to taxes. The new agreement also includes guarantees of no tax rises on personal or corporate income, as well as a commitment not to touch Germany's deficit-limiting debt break. This is somewhat unsurprising, given that the current parliamentary arithmetic makes any tax increases or constitutional changes unlikely to get through Germany's upper house anyway. The leader of the FDP, Christian Linder, is also set to be appointed as Germany's new finance minister although he insists that he's not as much of a fiscal hawk as much of the media have made him out to be. Talking to a German newspaper, Linda said that this portrayal is too wooden, before going on to stress that his party, the FDP, actually supported the EU's truly gigantic recovery package, something we've covered in a number of other videos on this channel. On to the final section though, foreign policy. 
Germany's foreign policy under Merkel has been pretty pragmatic. It's essentially involved staying relatively quiet about China and Russia's questionable human rights records and geopolitical aggression, while maintaining trade with both countries. For example, Germany has been a big advocate for Nord Stream 2, and in 2016, China overtook the US to become Germany's largest trading partner. The Greens always wanted to take a harsher line when it comes to authoritarian regimes, whereas the SPD were pretty content with continuing Merkel's pragmatism. The Greens look like they've won out here though, with Green Party co-leaders Baerbock and Habeck running the foreign ministry and a new climate ministry respectively, which puts them in a strong position to influence foreign policy. The agreement also includes some unusually strong language on Russian relations, saying that while a stable relationship is the ultimate goal, the coalition considers Russian interference in Ukraine and Belarus unacceptable and expects Russia to support civil and democratic freedoms. The agreement takes a similar tone with China, embracing the EU's description of China as a strategic rival and advocating for strategic independence. When it comes to defence, the two big questions were whether Germany would commit to NATO's 2% spending target and what the new administration's attitude would be on NATO's nuclear sharing programme. The document isn't explicit when it comes to the 2% spending target, and all it says about NATO is that it's an indispensable part of Germany's safety. When it comes to nuclear weapons though, the new administration is treading the middle line. Essentially, while their ultimate aim is a world free of nuclear weapons, as long as nukes play a role in NATO, they'll continue to cooperate. So, they want to negotiate a successor to the New START treaty, which currently only covers American and Russian nukes, to include China and so-called strategic nukes. They also plan to become observers, but not quite members, to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, an international nuclear disarmament treaty. The last thing worth saying about the coalition's foreign policy is that they're staunchly pro-Europe. They want to make the EU more proactive by replacing the EU Council's unanimity rule when it comes to common foreign and security policy, replacing it with a qualified majority. They also support greater cooperation between European armies and want to accelerate the accession of six Western Balkan states to the EU. Interestingly, there's even a bit about Brexit in there with the coalition insisting on full compliance with the Northern Ireland Protocol and the Good Friday Agreement, and back countermeasures if the UK violates either agreement. So what happens next? Well, the three parties hope to vote in Schultz as the Chancellor in a vote on the 6th of December. The SPD have already put an extraordinary party conference in the calendar to ratify the coalition agreement on the 4th of December. The FDP are expected to do the same thing on the 5th, and the Greens have committed to consulting with all party members before the 6th. Anyway, what do you think? Would you vote for this policy programme? And is it an improvement on Merkel's CDU? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said at the start, if you use code Black Friday in our store this weekend, you'll get 22% off everything you order. You heard me, 22%. You can even get two signed copies of our book, Brexit the Colouring Book, for $14.99 if you use the link below. Now, that's some good Brexit news for once. Anyway, treat yourself and your TLDR loving friends by heading to the store. And by doing so, you're also helping support our work. So, thank you. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you too want to see your name at the end of videos, then you can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.